Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, No Flat Images, and in this video I'm going to look at fine art black and white printing. Now, I'll ignore the fact that I don't actually know what fine art means, but um, other people tend to assume a certain style of printing, certain type of paper, etc, etc. I will, we'll leave that one anyway, but this is on the Epson ET8550. Now, this is a, an interesting printer in that it's Epson's first photo printer with ink tanks rather than cartridges. And um, I've got other videos that look at printing, panoramics, setting up the printer and various stuff. And we'll have a much more detailed review in due course. But this time I'm going to look specifically at black and white printing. There's a very important difference with the 8550 in that the ink set is a hybrid ink set with pigment and dye-based inks. Now, as I'll show, because I'm going to do two prints here, one on uh, Epson cold press uh, natural textured paper. So this is uh, an Epson paper. It's a cotton rag style paper. It's uh, no optical brightness, so it's a natural color. And it's a slightly textured surface. I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to do a print on a luster finish to show the differences between different types of paper for black and white. Now it so happens that the settings for the paper here, the art paper, uh, matte paper, and the luster paper, more traditional photo paper, use different ink combinations. And um, I'll have a look when I've done the two prints at the differences and why this additional ink that you get with this is an important contribution towards print quality, but it also means you have to be much more careful in your selection of paper type for black and white printing. But anyway, enough of that, let's get on with making a print. Um, I'm going to be using the Epson print layout software, not because it's particularly good for it, it's, it's quite good software, but it's the same for Windows and the PC, and I'm running it from my Mac here. So I'll show you some of the screenshots of the setup for it, but it's very easy to use. So I've loaded this paper and I've set the size, by the way, on here. Uh, A3, I've set it at VFA or Velvet Fine Art as the media setting that I'm going to use for this paper. Now the media setting, it turns out, is very important when you're printing black and white to get optimal results. But anyway, to the computer. Now I've set this up, uh, set the media type, paper size, I'm using the rear paper feed. It says quality standard. That's actually the only quality you've got. Layout, I'm not using anything particular here. Um, I've loaded the image. It's actually loaded from Photoshop. As you can see, I've got both images that I'm going to print loaded into print layout at the moment. But uh, I'm not worried about sizing. I've, I've put it on. It's laid out here. Um, nothing really to set on the margins or size. I'm happy with it for this. You might want to change it. You can, for example, print borderless at A3+. Now, in the color settings, I've selected Advanced B&W Photo, so ABW mode. Don't change any of the other adjustments. It's fine as it is. Now, I'll show some examples at the end where I've tried printing using profiles and other papers and things as to why these settings are important. Now, do have a read of the uh, review when it comes, and I'll have an article about black and white printing, which will go into far more technical detail as to why I'm using these different settings and how they are. But anyway, uh, I don't need to change anything from this. I can just press print. Now, it'll take, uh, it's a large image. It will take a moment or two to be processed. This printer's connected wirelessly, so uh, just a matter of waiting for it to wake up and print. Silly, I know, but this bit always impresses me. When you load papers like this at the back, make sure they're flat and that the corners aren't sticking up or anything like that. That's the sort of stuff that causes feed errors. This is coming through here. If you're ever unsure, by the way, of a um, paper like this, which side to print on, because they can look quite similar, just lightly moisten your finger and just touch 
the print surface, ideally not somewhere where you're going to be printing, but just touch the print surface there and you'll feel a slight tackiness compared with the other side. Um, may not be much on some papers, but that's the side you print on, the, the, the slightly tacky feeling one. Anyway, it's printing. It's just one setting here, so it's, uh, it's a bit slower than printing photos, but uh, we'll just wait for the print to come out. Well, the uh, print's starting to come out. Should be able to see how it looks in a moment. There is a little light just under here, which is quite helpful for checking just how the print's looking. It's rather a bluish tinge, a uh, white LED, so uh, it looks rather distinctly blue, even to my eyes, under this lighting here. Um, LED halogen replacement lights. Now, the lighting that you view black and white prints on is quite important because the different amounts of light in different parts of the spectrum. If the inks were truly neutral black, grey, then it wouldn't matter what your lighting was look, look like, the print would look neutral grey. One of the problems in the past with uh, dye-based printers is that the black dyes are not as dark in the deep red part of the spectrum, certainly into the infrared, as they are in um, other lights, so green light, uh, you may have the black is quite black. Red light, it's not as black. Now that means that um, this has been a problem with uh, dye-based printers over the years, is that you print black and white and the colour tint that your image has varies depending on your lighting. Uh, it was particularly bad under tungsten lighting, which has a lot of red in it. Take the print into somewhere lit by daylight, print looks perfectly good. Bring it indoors, it might have a slightly reddish tinge, magenta tinge, or even a greenish tinge, depending on how the inks have mixed up when they've been applied to the paper. What that means is that if you're using a dye-based printer, and I'll come back to this in detail more when we've got both prints done, and I've got some test prints I can show as well, is that if you are coming to this printer from another printer with a different ink set, forget any perception of your favourite paper, which papers look best. New printer, new papers. Now, it may be that the papers you've enjoyed using on another printer look fine on this one. And this goes for Black and white for certain, less so for colour, uh, but you know, you'll notice it with things like this, is that you need to do some testing. And I'll show some more of that when I've done both prints as to why the testing is important, if black and white print quality is important to you. Now, I know a lot of people enjoy printing black and white photos. I do. I use a much larger pigment ink based printer, and those prints are bang on neutral. They look great. Now that means I'm rather picky about quality for black and white, but one of the things is, once you notice a colour tint or a colour slight tinge to a print, you can't unnotice it. Um, that's fine, it's annoying when it's you, but if somebody, if you're trying to sell your prints and somebody spots that, they're going to think, why do I want a greenish tinted print or a magenta tinted print? And they almost certainly won't. So. When you get one of these printers, think of it back going back to, you know, back to the start, start from scratch, try a paper, get sample papers, particularly if you're using printing like the black and white, use the ABW mode in the printer driver. It is almost always, um, I say almost always because I've seen a few counter examples, but very rare, almost always better than using a color profile to print black and white. Um, I would go so far as to say that I simply don't expect colour profiles to print very well. Now, that's partly a problem with colour profiling software, and that's something I will be looking at um, in the course of the year. But, in general, if you want good black and white, use the ABW mode and test beforehand. Don't go out and buy a box of your favourite paper, art paper, at A3+. And, you know, a box of this will cost you a few bob. 
don't go out and buy some to go with the printer. Um, you, if you start with paper and then select your printer, you've got it the wrong way round, and that causes a lot of problems. But uh, enough of that, I'll come back to show some proper examples of this as to why that matters in a moment. But anyway, this print is looking fine. It's the uh, steps up to the chapter house at Wells Cathedral. It's one I regularly use for testing. One, because I really like the image, but also because the tonality of it is the kind of softness that I feel suits a matte paper like this. Now this is a natural finish paper, so it's got no brightness in it. I've got a smooth, bright version of this paper, which some images look better on. But I've got a video and I've written articles about choosing papers. And I always say don't have too many papers. Pick a few that you like. This Epson Cold Press Natural is in fact a version of a paper that I have used for over 15 years. And it is one of my go-to papers. I test it, it's one of the ones I use for testing any new printer. It usually gives good results, but not always. Certainly I know when I'm printing with a pigment ink printer, this paper will look good, and the images that suit it will look good. It is important though, when I say images that suit it. If you want a higher contrast look to your prints, then you'll need a different paper. But anyway, there, just to start with, we'll leave this one to uh, dry off for a moment, and I'll print the other one. So that's the steps, that's printed on a quite thick paper. This next paper is a luster photo paper. I think it's about 208, 280 grams, something like that. Um, I'm going to change the settings here just to paper type. Um, it's a luster paper. Luster isn't particularly isn't supported specifically in the settings here. From testing, I found that for this particular paper, the premium glossy media setting gives the best results. You might want to experiment like that, and I'll show you the test images that I use for that. So we go from that, uh, not ultra glossy, there we go, premium glossy, A3+, plus. close that. That's now ready to print, and I'll go to the computer and print this one. Now I've switched over to the second image. I've changed the paper media type to premium glossy. Now, make sure you do that if you load several images because the settings that you used in the previous image will be still applied to the second image. So uh, when I switched over, it was still saying Velvet Fine Art, which I don't want. So this is a luster paper. So I've set it, once again, the quality is high. I haven't done anything for the scaling or anything like that. And for advanced B&W photo, I'm using the default settings. Now notice that that says tone darker. Ignore that. I've never known why Epson call their default darker. It's the best setting, usually. Uh, you can go and you can edit uh, these settings and change them. I would say the best place is to edit the picture before you send it to print layout, but if you want to, you can edit it here. But anyway, we'll just press print. So I've sent it. It's on its way. It'll take a uh, few moments to... Uh, do whatever processing it's doing, send it over the wireless network, and we will have a print to complement this one. The usual whirrings and whatever you get before anything happens. And paper just loads. Now this, I can hear immediately, is printing slightly faster than uh, this one. It's printing uh, bi-directionally. For prints like this, where you're printing very detailed images and you're printing it like this, do do the paper alignment check when you get your printer and you've set it up for the first time. I know a lot of people skip it, they think, oh, it looks all right. Go through the alignment check. It can be a bit tricky to do, uh, to get it right, but um, it is well worth doing for any new printer. Uh, although the printers are meant to work as is out of the box, there are slight alignment issues, there are shipping issues, it's been bumped about. There may be a tiny realignment needed, so always do that printer check if it's uh, requested when you're setting the printer up. Well, 
here comes the print. It looks fine. Now the differences between these two papers are obviously one's a cotton rag paper matte finish, no optical brightness, so it's a warm colour, Slight, slightly warm. It shouldn't. You can get some with um, that have a distinctly warmish look to them. This just looks like a natural white. Uh, the lustre paper here does have brightness in it, so it's a bright white paper. Um, it's, I know this particular one works really well for colour photos as well, but uh, I just wanted to check how well it goes on for black and white. Now, I'm quite confident before even printing these pictures that they're going to come out fine. And the reason I'm confident they're going to come out fine is that I've actually, and this is some of the testing I do for, for the reviewers, I've actually printed loads and loads of copies of my test image. Now it's black and white test image, there's a video explaining how it works and everything. It's, you can download versions of it from the Northlight Images website. It is a critical test of black and white print performance. I will not print black and white on a new printer until I've tested and there are a whole stack of copies of this picture here. Uh, you can of course um, print it, these are A4, if you haven't got A4 I cut some A3 sheets down. Um, there are other versions of this test image but what I'm looking for is the depth of black, the colour, because um, there shouldn't be any, there will be some, and um, what the differences are between them. Now you may be able to see and what I would say is please don't read too much into any slight colour tints or anything you see in this video. Video is a dreadful medium for accurate colour reproduction, certainly at the level of equipment and processing I've got here. So don't read too much into it but I'm hoping that you can see that the matte paper is a different look to it to the glossy or the luster finished papers. Anyway, let's see what this print comes out like. Immediately I can see, just look at this, the blacks on this are deeper. This sort of paper suits more contrasty type images. There's not a lot of contrast, there's no, there's no direct lighting in here on these steps. Uh, this image was taken um, a few years ago and was inspired by one by F.H. Evans from early on in the 20th century and um, it's a classic picture although his is just a small version of this because he didn't have a 17 millimeter shift lens um, that's 35 millimeter equivalent size to take his photos with but um, that was uh, with that and it's soft sandstone I think I believe sandstone, it might be limestone, I'm not sure, can't remember what uh, Wales Cathedral is made of, but it's soft stone. So there's a smoothness and a warmth to it. This other picture, this was taken of um, a new building not far from here at De Montfort University, and there are deep blacks on this image. I want more contrast, I want the emphasis between the white and the black to show out more. I don't want jet black, deep blacks in this picture. So I print on this paper. It produces this lowered contrast range and it's very different. Now if I put this one up, hopefully you can see this is uh, at uh, the VJ Patel building, part of it, the gallery at De Montfort University. And there we have the steps at Wells Cathedral. Two very different images printed on very different papers. This one is 600 year old architecture. This one is six year old architecture. There's the difference between them. Now I'm looking at them here I can see that this is a brighter white and this one is smooth. So that's okay. those are the obvious differences but what about details in the tonality? What about shadow detail. Now this one has shadow detail in it. There is structure deep in the shadows and that's an important bit when printing black and white and that is why I have various aspects of these test images. 
Now if I take the two glossy ones here, these were printed on Epson Premium Luster. So it's very similar paper to this one here. And what I would say is, do when you do prints like this, write on the side of them or on the back of them what the settings were because you will never remember after a while. And I can see that these two were both done, one was using the premium semi-gloss setting and one was using the premium photo glossy setting. There is visually not much difference between them. I could have used either. Now it turns out when you look in detail at some of the aspects of this, such as this bullseye pattern, some of the shadow detail here, and this bar at the top here, and the bar at the top is for automated measurement that I use. There are, there are versions for all kinds of ways. You can use a scanner for this if need be. But by having a look at this image, I decided that the absolute best settings for producing on this particular paper were the premium glossy setting. And that's the one using the ABW print mode. That's the one I used for the luster finish one there. Looking at other papers here, this is the bright version, hot press bright, so it's smoother and it's a bright version of this paper here, the art paper. So this is a matte paper as well. If I wanted some image, I might choose a bright paper or a you know, a warmer paper like that. That also tells me that the Velvet Fine Art, the VFA setting, is the one to use with this paper. Now, I've mentioned before about the importance of actual testing. I use quite often when I'm testing printers, a art, an art paper, um, and this is a cotton rag paper, this is 265 gram, smooth. It's a natural white, so there's no whiteners in it. And this one, I know from printing on loads of other printers, because I've tested it with loads of printers, it's a really good paper. It's not quite as thick as the other one, it's 265 grams. But, printed black and white, it looks dreadful. Uh, it may uh, be, you may be able to see on the video, I'm hopeful, on the bullseye pattern, how here, it's much more of a solid blotch than it is on the other one. This also has, under this light, a distinct greenish tinge to it. It's awful. Um, yet this paper produces very nice results on pigment ink printers. Um, I've tested loads of printers and had really nice looking prints on this. What's causing it to look so bad? It is the mix of dye and pigment inks that just don't work very well for this particular paper. Now I produced a profile, a colour profile, and it does make moderately good colour prints, but you can see that it's not optimised. And that is the key thing I'm trying to say here about paper choice for a printer like this. On the luster paper here, or glossy papers, photo papers, <clears throat> it is only using the black dye ink. There is no pigment ink being used on that. For the prints that are done on the art papers, the deeper colours and the deep blacks are having an addition of pigment ink. And that pigment black is giving really nice rich blacks on this paper and awful crunching of shadows on this paper. So, two papers I might have thought would look very similar, but they don't. So the key there is that if you want to print black and white, don't assume that your favorite paper will automatically work. It may, it may not. That uh, could be an expensive mistake if you just bought a 50 box sheet box of it, of sheets. So there we have two prints, art paper, luster paper. Now, I hope this is useful. I'm going to be producing some more stuff about black and white that will be for the article and the review, which will have more technical details on it. But if you've got any questions, please do ask in the comments for the video or drop me an email at Northlight. And uh, hopefully these are of interest. Uh, please subscribe to, please pass on details of the channel to anyone you think might be interested in photography and printing. So uh, thank you very much.